Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Today, I want to talk about R&D and legal teams that are based in innovation-focused companies that essentially need to know at the early stage of development whether there is any IP risk around the projects that they're working on or to ensure that organisations' resources are allocated to projects that have the highest chance of success. Now, I recently discovered a software-as-a-service platform that actually leverages artificial intelligence, neural networks, machine learning, and natural language processing to correlate patents, images, and chemical structure similarities, and packages them into an intuitive, easy-to-use platform for research and development. Now, this company in question is called PatSnap. And they have over 3,000 customers worldwide, including PwC, NASA, China Mobile and Vodafone, to name but a few. And as a result, they're rapidly becoming a globally recognised leader in IP amongst the world's most innovative, intelligent and influential minds. But as a provider of cloud-based R&D analytics, they've also recently announced something called Playbooks which essentially is a series of one-step interactive tools to automate the gathering of market insight and competitive intelligence, all from that R&D data. Now, what's really exciting is it's hoped that the launch of Playbooks will make it possible for those with no prior knowledge of IP at all to gain the intelligence and analysis that they need, all with the click of a button. I think it's always great to speak to a guest in the UK that is helping a company enjoy success on a global scale. So buckle up and hold on tight because I want to beam your ears to London town so we can speak with Duncan Clark from PatSnap. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Duncan. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Hi there. Um, yeah, so my name is Duncan Clark. I'm head of product marketing and uh, PatSnap Academy. So I work very closely with uh, clients and industry experts in the area of um, R&D innovation specifically. Fantastic. Now, my understanding is PatSnap is one of the leading providers of research and development analytics, all for analysing tech trends, driving innovation, market planning, competitor intelligence, and maximising return on those IP assets. But for anyone that's new to this industry, words like this might scare them away. So can I ask you to help the listener visualise what Snap is, what problems it solves, and also what makes it stand out from the crowd? Um, Yeah, absolutely. So... I think just to give a little bit of, of, of context, first of all, um, one of the things, uh, one of the big problems really in this area is um, year on year, um, more and more money is being spent on R&D. Um, we think that's going to be over two trillion in 2017. Um, but at the same time, over the last 40 years, that return on investment has actually decreased by about 65%. Added to that, around 96% of innovation projects don't even return um, their actual cost of capital. So um, that's really the reason why uh, we built PatSnap. Um, Just to your point there in terms of, um, you know, what PatSnap is uh, uh, offering, as you mentioned, things like analyzing those tech trends in order to drive that uh, innovation forwards, in order to be able to do things like uh, market planning, and answer those questions around things like um, what competitors are doing in the market. So it's all about saying, you know, how do we make that money that's being invested work better and work harder for, for our clients? Now, there's a great video on your website describing innovation intelligence. But for anyone that hasn't seen it, can you just help uh, give an overview of exactly what innovation intelligence is? Um, yeah, absolutely. So innovation intelligence, essentially um, what we're talking about there is Um, taking all of that wealth of knowledge that exists in patents um, and also the associated associated information and then turning that into um, business insights. So being able to answer specific questions um, in terms of, you know, let's say, for example, where the trends are moving towards, um, what what would create good value for an organization in terms of um, IP assets and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, in terms of that information that it exists within patents, you know, a lot of that actually is written in quite an obscure way. There's lots of jargon, there's lots of legalese. So innovation intelligence is all about sort of bringing uh, machine learning and bringing big data to to, uh, to that wealth of information so you can actually unlock the insights that sits 
uh, that, that sits within that uh, within that information. Now, there does seem to be like a lack of education and understanding in this area. So, can you tell me more about the launch of PetSnap Academy and how it actually aims to bridge that gap and, and essentially raise the level of knowledge in that area? So, yeah, um, PetSnap Academy um, is an initiative actually that we've launched uh, quite recently. Um, exactly as you mentioned, um, we're hoping to raise the level of knowledge in the uh, in the area specifically around um, you know innovation intelligence and how that can be used to um, accelerate success within the r d world essentially we've taken the information from for example legal and innovation experts and it's also the chance for us to uh, share our knowledge and expertise so that information that we've also gleaned from working with the clients attending events and so on and so forth so it's a platform that sort of packages that up into uh, bite-sized videos and materials that people can use um, in order to also um, learn from, from that knowledge. Um, we've made it free to access, so anybody can um, actually benefit from the materials that, that we put on there. And as I mentioned, it's all about saying what are those best practices towards you know, being able to accelerate those innovation processes um, and getting towards more rapid commercialization and specifically how data can help with that. Am I right in saying you offer personalised learning profiles too? And, and how does that work? Um, yeah, that's absolutely right. So um, in terms of the learning profiles, that's essentially where people have, um, for example, undertaken um, certain courses on the academy. So it record, um, you know, where people are up to, what their progress looks like, so they can actually um, track their progress in terms of the different modules. There's also things like interactive quizzes. So people at the end of consuming the content can actually also um, have a chance to test their knowledge as well. So how many students do you currently have? What kind of backgrounds are they from? And also, what kind of feedback have you received from them? Yeah, so as I mentioned, it's a new initiative. Um, so over the last three months, um, about 800 people have joined PatSnap Academy. Cool. Um, so from that perspective, we can see it's obviously um, you know, it's welcomed by the community. Um, the background, wide range of backgrounds, really, um, everything from uh, the R&D professionals um, through to IP experts, as well as students um, have uh, have joined the uh, the community there. So one question I've got to ask, in a world full of creative people, how big a problem is IP crime at the moment? Yeah, um, that's a really interesting question. I think certainly... Uh, when we look at uh, IP crime, and you know, as we're all aware, we're living in an increasingly digitalized world yep. with globalization. When we think about that in the context of intellectual property, it does mean that um, you know that extra flow of information means that there's more risk actually attached to being caught of infringement, for example. But it also means for companies, organisations that are creating IP all of the time. You know, without protection, it's also more likely that um, ideas, products, the intellectual property um, is being put at risk as well. And I mean, just to put a few figures around that. Um, the number of items, infringing items that have been seized at the UK border, for example, that sits around um, two million at the moment. At the EU border, that's 26, 26 million. So, you know, it, it is a problem and it is something that, you know, organisations uh, will really want to take quite seriously. So how are you helping companies find the edge when it comes to patenting? For us, it's not just about being a data provider, yeah. for example. So, um, you know, there's lots of ways that you can search different, uh, you know, the information that, that sits within patents. But, you know, for us, it's also about working with clients, um, looking very closely at some of the pain points that exist within R&D and then help them overcome those problems. Um, so just to give you an example of that, um, and I recently came back from the uh, an innovation summit in Amsterdam, actually, and there are some sort of key themes that, that resonate um, with all of the clients that we speak to. Um, for example, the first thing that a lot of organizations are looking to improve is collaboration between uh, different units, for instance. So I think there's a feeling that, you know, particularly where operations within organizations can perhaps exist in kind of siloed pillars sometimes, um, there is a need to kind of break that down a little bit. So you, for instance, sometimes have IP, it's looked upon as a very much kind of legal area, 
Um, and then you've got uh, the, the R&D teams as well who are working on their projects. And it's all about sort of bringing um, those different units together um, and acknowledging that, you know, the more they can collaborate, in fact, the more competitive advantage they can gain. So collaboration is, is one aspect. Um, another one that comes up quite frequently as well, and I think this is this is the, the sort of pressure of, of R&D and, and the world that we live in with, you know, the, the pressure to innovate more rapidly all of the time is around how do you find those new kind of breakthrough ideas so i think on this point nobody wants to be confronted let's say with a blank sheet of paper um you know that's quite daunting so how do you actually help an ideation process to, to really stimulate those those ideas um you know so that innovation can keep pace with the uh, with the actual market and then i think the final thing is um, around benchmarking and you know, this is, I think, goes hand in hand with um, big data or data analysis generally. There's, um, you know, that growing awareness that business decisions need to be backed up by hard and fast data. Um, so in that sense, um, th there's questions that arise around, you know, how do you measure R&D? What is a good metric? How can you say, um, for instance, if you want to be the leading innovator in a certain area, how do you actually prove as a business that is what's actually taking place. So you're more innovative, perhaps this this uh, quarter than you were last quarter, for example, or this year versus last year. Were there any other big takeaways from that innovation summit in Amsterdam? As I said, th those were the, the kind of key ones. Yeah. Um, I think um, those were the themes, that, and the reason I mentioned reason I mentioned them is because you know they were themes that came up time and time again in all of the um, all of the different the different presentations um, and you know just generally from talking across the floor. So I think the other thing that struck me was um, the actual attention that's now being played. Uh, sorry, the actual attention that's now being paid to really improving those innovation processes as well. So it's not just all about saying. Let's uh, let's throw money at the problem. It's also about saying what, well, how can we do this in a more strategic way? So there are a lot of presentations actually around um, some of those best practices as well. So what's next for Pat Snap? Is there anything else that you can share with us today? Yeah. So in terms of where we're at as an organisation, um, I mean we've been growing rapidly. Um, so and that that speed of growth hasn't slowed. Um, we're actually looking at uh, you know to see which territory we can expand into next. Um, we've recently recently launched um, an office in the US, and aside from that, we're going to continue to work with with clients. Um, so you know that close collaboration gives us a pretty aggressive product roadmap. I think uh, you know we continue to make more data more accessible for people so that it's more more searchable. Uh, just to give you an example around that, we've recently launched a licensee locator. Um, again, that's all about saying, you know, how can we, um, you know, improve the return on investment that people are getting from their IP as uh, from their IP assets uh, as one example there. So yeah, I think quite quite an exciting future um, uh, and quite an exciting year ahead in 2018. Fantastic. So where in the US is your office based? Um, so that's in LA. Oh, cool. Do you yeah. get to go out there on a regular basis? For business purposes, um, of course, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of the, one of the benefits of uh, working for a company that's that's opening offices in uh, in other territories, right? So, uh, and particularly, you know, to, to get to uh, to Silicon Valley and uh, you know, sort of be there in the hub of, of US innovation is is you know very exciting indeed. So, <laughs> so before I let you go, can you remind the listeners of your web and social media channels, and also the best way to get them to contact your team if they have any questions about what we've talked about today yeah absolutely um so uh they can follow us obviously it's uh on twitter um the twitter handle is at pat snap um visit our website that's uh, patsnap.com or indeed um reach out to me directly so uh, my email address dclark at patsnap.com so any of those channels will uh, Will, will suffice. Well, it sounds like you've got an incredibly bright future for 2018, so I wish you the best of luck for that. But more than anything, a big thank you for coming on and sharing your story today. Yeah, no problem. It's great to talk to you. The world of patents, being able to simulate a merger, litigation threat, litigation history, patent value, are areas that I don't have a huge experience with. But I understand more than anyone that the importance of it and why using technology to help those with no prior knowledge of IP, such as myself, to gain the intelligence and the analysis that they need, 
all at the click of a button. And this is the game changer for PatSnap for me because that is exactly what technology should be used for, to make our lives easier, make our work more efficient, rather than wasting countless hours in unproductive meetings and bouncing hundreds of emails around. Because surely there is a more efficient way of working. And I think this is what PatSnap are excelling at here. I think that they brought together the world's most comprehensive R&D data set by adding IP data, licensing and litigation data, economic data, patent valuation, image and chemical formula search and trademark recognition to provide even the world's most innovative organisations with a new intuitive source of information that they can use during their research. With VC backing from Silicon Valley and offices across Americas, Europe and Asia and also experiencing rapid growth, it's easy to see why they're doing something right here. And for those reasons alone, I wish them the best for the future. But over to you listening on the number 79 bus to work this morning. Are you sitting there with your own experience in IP or your own insights on this particular subject? If so, I invite you to join this conversation too by sharing your views by emailing me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes. But that's it for this episode, I'm afraid. I'll be back tomorrow as normal, bright and early. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.